I picked this 2020 M1 MacBook Pro 13 from a pawn shop 3 months ago and I think it was the best decision I could have made. I'm Max from Lifehacker Max, I'm a content creator and this is not your typical specs focus review. This is my first MacBook and I want to share with you my story, why I chose this specific laptop, the pros and cons and why I think it is still worth buying in 2023. I've been working from my home PC for a long time and due to my ADHD, working on a schedule, pinned in place, was quite challenging. I needed the flexibility to work wherever inspiration struck. A laptop was a great solution to capture those moments of motivation. Because let me tell you, my motivation strikes at the most inconvenient times. But why go for Apple's MacBook Pro and not just any other laptop. You see, I've been an iPhone fan going all the way back to the iPhone 4. Now with the iPhone 11 Pro Max in my pocket, I can manage a lot of tasks, write ideas and scripts for my videos, stay active on social media, respond to your comments and even film great footage for my content. But when it comes to editing videos on the go, I needed more power, a bigger display and professional editing software. And I needed something that works particularly well with my phone. Well, here's something that really excited me about the MacBook Pro that no one talks about. The integration between the two devices is seamless in many ways, but sharing files between my iPhone and the MacBook Pro is made extremely easy with the AirDrop feature, no matter if it's a simple photo, a document or a 10 GB video. Those devices were designed to work together. No more cables, no more hassle, just tap and send. It was only logical to go with the most compatible laptop with my phone, the MacBook Pro. With the new M1 chip, editing videos on this machine it's a dream, while rendering is lightning fast. And this is only the 8GB of RAM version. The speed and performance it offers are impressive and it's a game changer for me as a content creator. And if this laptop has enough power for editing videos you can imagine how well it performs day to day tasks like browsing the internet, checking emails, editing documents, watching movies or even occasional gaming. The 13.3 inch display is perfect for my needs, it's big enough to get immersed in my work yet small enough to be effortlessly portable. Plus the retina display it's a feast for the eyes. Colors pop, details shine and editing becomes an art. It is also great for watching crystal clear movies from time to time. And to be honest this display is not that small if you ask me. And if I really need a bigger display I can always connect it to an external monitor. It also has a mirroring feature and I can connect the Pro to my TV completely wirelessly. Speaking of design, the touch bar is a feature that elevates productivity to new heights. This dynamic strip of innovation adapts to my tasks offering shortcuts, controls, text prediction and even emojis right at my fingertips. I find it to be very useful despite other people's opinion. And the Touch ID option is convenient and keeps all my work safe yet easy to access. Now you might be wondering why I chose this specific model. Like many others I try to find ways to save money without making too many compromises. So the logic behind my choice was simple, buy it used, go one or two generations behind and get all that innovation at a fraction of the cost. Also the average lifespan of a MacBook before it becomes irrelevant it's about 7 years or more. So I figured if I buy this used 2020 model for cheaper than the new one I get all the new features and still have until 2027 or who knows maybe 2030 before I have to replace it. Buying refurbished laptops or from the second hand market doesn't come without risks. And you should be very careful if you choose to spend your money this way as you can end up buying a defective product. It's pretty much a gamble to some extent, so do it at your own risk. I chose to pick mine from a pawn shop because they don't accept just any products and not without testing them first. So I took a shot in order to save about 600 euros. And it also came with this awesome protector. It's rugged, it's tough and it makes my MacBook Pro look like it's ready for a SWAT operation. Plus it adds that extra layer of protection which is crucial for a device I depend on. So the powerful M1 chip, the crisp display, the touch bar, the touch ID, the illuminated keyboard and the trackpad with pressure sensing capabilities. The way I see it this was a smart investment that should serve me for years to come. But wait, there's more. This MacBook Pro is absolutely silent almost all the time. This is fantastic when I'm recording audio or filming. No more background noise interfering with my content creation. The only time I heard the fan turn on was when I was testing to see how well it handles games. I have played a few games since I got it, but for this video I tried out Borderlands 3. And even though the game performed very well and FYI my PlayStation 4 controller connected instantly to the MacBook, the MacBook Pro's chassis got pretty hot and the fan started to blow. 
I don't think that is a real concern since the MacBook Pro's cooling system was designed to dissipate heat throughout its aluminium body, but I wouldn't personally buy this laptop for gaming. Mostly because for one I'm a console gaming guy and secondly I plan to preserve this laptop for as much as I can. But that is just my opinion and it doesn't mean it can handle games well. Are you using the M1 Pro for gaming? Leave me a comment because I would really like to know. Coming back to portability, I wasn't just pleasantly surprised but amazed on how long this thing can go on a single charge. Because let me tell you, this MacBook Pro can go for days if you use it for basic daily tasks. I was lucky enough to find this used laptop with only 4 charging cycles on the battery, which meant it was practically brand new when I bought it. By the way, checking the battery health and charging cycles on MacBooks and iPhones is one of the things you should always check before buying a used device. Last time I counted, I used it for about 3 days on a single charge. But that is without doing any extensive work. So I did a little experiment to see how long I can play a game for on a single charge. I tested Borderlands 3. And while it performed brilliantly on this machine, I got exactly 2 hours of gameplay before the battery went from 100% down to 10%. But again, I didn't buy it for gaming. When it comes to sound, I can't say much, as I don't really have an ear for judging sound quality. But I will say this. It sounds great to me, and I haven't felt the need to connect it to other sources. By the way, I'm using the internal mic and webcam for this section. Wait, 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 cause I have to start the cam. By the way, I'm using the internal mic and webcam for this section of the video, in case you are wondering about those. There are also a few things that bother me with this specific model. Two compromises that I wouldn't have made if I could afford not to. One is the limited number of two Thunderbolt ports, which I guess I could go around by adding a multi-port adapter. But if you ask me, one more port on the other side could have gone a long way. And the other thing is the storage space. Even though I got the 512GB version, I feel that is not nearly enough as I usually use at least 100GB of footage for a single video. So for me as a content creator, the small storage space is the biggest downside regarding the M1 MacBook Pro 13. They do have the 1TB and 2TB options, but the prices are pretty spicy to the point that it is more convenient to carry with me an external drive. Of course this comes off as another inconvenience when we talk about portability, as now I have one more thing to worry about. Or two, or two things. I have two things here to worry about. Yeah, I feel the need to address one more thing to complete my story. How the transition from Windows to macOS went for me as a long time Windows user. Well, the macOS is definitely different from Windows, and there is a learning curve to get around in order to feel comfortable with the new system. I felt the same way when I transitioned from Android to Apple's iOS. If you ask me, the MacBook Pro might not be for everyone when it comes to its operating system. In the end, it really comes to preference and accommodation. What I can tell you is that I'm really enjoying the new experience and at this point I feel very comfortable with the Mac OS. If you found this video helpful or relatable, share it with a friend, hit that like button and consider becoming a Patreon following the link in the description. This is Max from Lifehacker Max, signing off.